Hello everyone, welcome to the first Snap Take of the day. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. And we've got three awesome decks for you today, as we do every single day. In addition, Untapped has stats on Deadpool's Diner. So I went and pulled, I mean, I sort of eliminated the like repeat decks, but I pulled five uh, decks from that are competing in Deadpool's Diner with over 50 games and an 80% win rate so that's what we're going to look at today all of that but we're going to begin with this km worst deck it's sandy water this deck looks like the stupidest thing in the world but it's unshangable incredible power it's power ahead of the curve at every spot power that moves and stopping your opponent from placing power on the board brilliant deck um there's so many like i tried this out there's so many little interactions and fun things to do with this um, build it's completely completely wild um white widow representing a two six is the biggest you get on two jeff is moving power one seven is the biggest you get on one cassandra Nova and gladiator are the biggest threes rescue and jessica jones are both four nines which is huge for a four and right under shang chi claw is humongous and ultron puts out um eight plus uh like 28 power is, is that wrong no god um 8, 16, uh, 24 power. There you go. And then Orca is a 6, 16. So, like, this deck is just all about putting out absolutely insane power. You can find Cam Worst, not Cam Best, Cam Worst, although obviously the name is homage, at twitter.com slash Cam Worst. White Widow and Jeff can be Armor, Medusa, Mirage, Nightcrawler, Zebu, and Psylocke. Um, Jeff's real power here is that he can go into that Ebony Maw lane, as a surprise move for games you don't need to play Ultron. Outside of that, he's kind of just there. Um, White Widow is just, again, good power. She, You are trying to do strong power ahead of curve, basically throughout this whole deck. Nocturne has the same benefit as Jeff, but thus could also be Copycat, Mobius, Hope Summers, Red Guardian, and Negasonic, and Polaris. All of those are potential options here. Uh, Gladiator and Cassie can be um, the same as above, but the size on these is key. You want the power out of curve, and you also want to try and be playing them into one lane as much as possible. You just sort of want to make one sort of insurmountable lane with all of these rarely played but ahead of curve cards. So you want a lane that has like a White Widow, um, Cassandra Nova, or Gladiator, and a Jessica Jones or Rescue right like you want that to happen and then you can claw on top of that uh rescue if you can so um this gained plus 400 sp in a freaking day to rank 32 which is absolutely insane this is an absolute cube thief so turn one if you have maw it's alone right turn two widow is more or less equal to jeff i tend to prefer jeff but there's not really a wrong answer here Turn three, Gladiator and Cassandra Nova are your priority. Cassandra generally over Gladiator, because if you need to play Gladiator later, you can, versus playing Cassandra Nova at that point, which kind of sucks. Um, Cassandra Nova is only really good on three in this particular deck, and outside of against Tarashim. Turn four, you can play Rescue over Jessica Jones, uh, generally speaking, because either Sandman or Claw on Rescue tends to create a fairly insurmountable aim, and those are better than any of your turn three plays. Turn five at that point, you'd really like to Sandman. You don't have to Sandman, but you'd really like to Sandman. If you don't Sandman, Claw, and Claw is significantly better on Rescue. Jessica Jones, you're fine Sandmaning elsewhere, right? But Claw, you're very often just going to try and use Claw to make that single lane so insurmountable, and then you're looking to Orca the next lane um, on top of that Claw, and that's where your power comes from. Last turn, you're playing uh, Ultron or Orca. Remember that because you're trying to stack up one lane, Ultron's Shang proof power is just putting um, eight in every lane, and you've got that, which is more than Doom, and you've got these almost empty lanes because of Ebony Maw or whatever else, and that's just how you win with the list. It is really good, and you should check it out. Like, how many, oop, how often, we're going to go back to it quickly, how often do you get to play with Ebony Maw, Rescue, Jessica Jones, Ultron, and Orca? Come on, this list is awesome. Admit it, you, you're dying to try it. Hey, we're going to talk about 
supporting the channel. And then right after that, we've got the number one deck in Snap. This is the only place you're going to find it. I went and tracked down Derek, and I had him tell me what he was playing as the number one deck. So we're going to take a look at it right after I uh, ask you to hit that sub button. One last look at this deck, and hit that sub button to help support the channel. Read, really, really appreciate it. We're doing our best to grow. We're doing our best to hit 15,000 by the end of the year. We're constantly fighting YouTube algorithm to get our uh, as many eyeballs on these videos as possible. So if you're willing, if you find value, please hit that sub button. In addition, like and comment, because your comments on this video, and I'll ask you what to comment momentarily, I'll ask you uh, what to comment during that number one deck. You leave a comment as long as you're subbed, you're entered to win a season pass. We're giving away five, that's right, five season passes this week and then five more next week. All you have to do is be subbed and comment whatever is asked on each video. Each video carries its own winner. All right. In addition, if you are looking for the, uh, an alliance still, the Snap Judgments uh alliances are still going we are currently running eight i know of a player hi venom that has 25 and another hi owie who has like 20 so we are you know not doing terribly but we're also not going crazy we're running eight we're willing to run as many as we need to because we want to be as inclusive as possible to our community uh priority is given to patreon members which means that like if we absolutely if push comes to shove we will uh do our best to make sure our patreon members can join even the free patreon members though so if you're interested please check that out patreon.com slash snap judgments the only thing you must do to be in one of our alliances is join the discard and then grab the seeking alliance role when you join the discard you'll be able to right click your name and assign a role to yourself hit the seeking alliance role the link to the discord is in the description once you've done that you can join our alliance please come feel free to join us hang out we are casual but we're still completing everything and having a great time doing so all right the number one deck right now is derek's ajax wolf this list is so much fun i uh have been playing this basically all day um it's a really really great success i've been playing alternating between this and a different ajax build and i would also once more like it noted that uh i was told that i was clickbaiting when i said ajax was incredible despite having both stats top players and my own card evaluation in hand. I said the second Arisham wasn't the meta. The two card Ajax Hazmat combo felt like Sage. It felt like Cannibal. Well, it is now in the number one deck. It's also going to be one of our 80% win rate decks, which is similar but not the same. This is a legit card, and this is a hilariously good way to do it. Um, I'm going to shout out one simple thing that I really, really love about this list. This list is like a million tiny combos that rewards you for playing wisely. Korg and Cassandra Nova have little synergy. If they happen to draw the rock, you just get a huge benefit, right? Like you've nerfed one of their draws, but Korg and Cassandra Nova are amazing. Now, if you can do that after a werewolf, you just got two moves on werewolf while Korg and Cassandra Nova. You can also um, end up doing that on a hope or one of the two on a hope, which is going to set up a... Um, which is going to set up a turn five where you can sort of go off and play everything all over the place, including that hazmat to set up that Ajax last turn. Or you can play on the hope on turn five, right? You can play um, Black Swan on hope on turn five. And even if you do nothing else, you've now got enough energy for hazmat, Ajax, and all your money. Crazy sauce how many different plays there are. Just playing Rocket multiple freaking times. Amazing. Um, yeah, the hood has two ways to get rid of the negative three three ways excuse me you have beast you have falcon you have um nico which means you have multiple opportunities to get multiple sixes on the board that way one six is just beautiful 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 deck props to uh derek no surprise to see this in the number one spot all right so uh derek plays if you want to check out derek's name he doesn't stream or anything but he has havoc op on the leaderboard that is his in-game name so Nico is uh, could be Iceman or Spiderham. Nico's really really good here. I don't love those changes. If you're gonna make one, I would probably aim with through Spiderham. Cassandra Nova is amazing here, particularly bouncing Cassandra Nova is at worst hilarious. Um, because Cassandra Nova is also why Korg is here. So if you got Cassandra Nova, also if you don't have Cassandra Nova, you also probably don't have Korg. But Gladiator is fine. Bishop is fine here at replacing Cassandra. Again, if you have Cassandra, run the damn card. Werewolf, Hope, and Ajax are the requirements. Um, I don't think you actually need Black Swan, though. I think Black Swan is really, really good in this deck. This is one of the best Black Swans ever felt, but you can try um, 
Sage, you can try Mystique, you can try other things in that spot, you can try Juggernaut, and I think there's enough there to try to make Black Swan an incredible card, but not a breezy good one. And my question for the day is, when you evaluated cards, I just said I got Ajax really right, um, sometimes I get cards really, really wrong. I didn't think Nocturne was going to be very good at all. I thought Nocturne was going to be good, I thought she was going to be a poor man's Jeff and just end up on the cutting room floor a lot. I was wrong. Nocturne's arguably the best card in Marvel Snap. I was right about Ajax. Um, I'm very rarely wrong about cards once we've had a week to like look at them and check them out. But what card, when you were evaluating, did you get wrong or right? Please let me know what you think. I'd love to hear about it in the comments, and that's how you enter to win the season pass today. All right, turn by turn. So this is the number one player's main deck with a top rank. There's another deck that Derek also played. Guess when we're going to take a look at it? Well, we do seven days a week of videos, so that will be in tomorrow's video. We will look at Derek's other list. Okay. Turn one, Korg is better than the other ones, generally speaking. Turn two, you play more ones. Turn three, Cassandra Nova or Werewolf are, generally speaking, better than Hope. Um, turn four, you're looking for Hope or a play on Hope, or Hope and a play on Hope immediately, or you can move the Wolf twice, or you can do Cork and Cassie, and once in a while, you just do Swan on four. Generally speaking, I prefer not to do Swan on four, but it is a reasonable play. Um, turn five, Swan on Hope, or a bunch of ones in Hazmat, or just Ajax and Swan. Remember, if you've got Hope out and you've had got Werewolf out, you can move Werewolf then, and then you can, um, with just one play on Hope Summers, you get your um, Ajax Hazmat turn six play, and that... Um, Hazmat will also move your werewolf, which does the thing that you're trying to do. So you have multiple ways to do that. So turn six is basically move wolf and big ass Ajax as best you can. And that's how this list wins. Um, you can win through different win conditions, right? You can win through multiple big Cassandra Novas. Humongous werewolf. Werewolf is so off on a 320 right now. Ajax, who's like a 524. Multiple demons for one six. Um, you can get three in a game relatively easily. Ricking their draws with rocks, um, or, and making rocket a one night. Lots of ways to win with this list. It's crazy strong. Please do try it out. Hey, Untapped now has diner stats. Uh, we've got one more full deck guide after these, but since Untapped has diner stats, I decided to go with uh, five decks that have a win rate above eighty percent. I went with um, decks that had over fifty games as my sample size because if you've played Deadpool Diner, you you know that 50 games is a crazy amount, right? Like, this isn't a game mode where you're playing thousands of games, or I, mean, I guess you can, but, like, this is a game mode where I think 50 games at a really high win rate is going to be telling, and these all have an 80 freaking percent win rate. Yeah, 80%. So the first list is the Move Boost. It is the um, deck that uh, Barzi, more or less, actually, this is uh, closer to the, um, excuse me, this is closer to the Sizer version. This is Owie playing it. Um, the Sizer version, the size like the original Sizer version of the move deck. Um, this list has the single highest win rate in terms of Deadpool's diner. What you're seeing here is the power of unpredictability. Um, Juggernaut and Captain Marvel are absolute cube stealers. Captain Marvel, is, if hit by Gwenpool, is almost completely overpowered, and Cassandra Nova gives you crazy, crazy strong play against Arishem, should you still be running to Arishem. Everything else about this list is relatively um, fairly obvious. In a few days, I'm going to commit Sacrilege, and I'm going to add Kate Bishop Hawkeye for Jeff in this list because I want that extra, uh, those two extra ones for my Thena plays to make sure I can get my Thena triggers off. Uh, because then I have an extra one while playing an extra two, and I'm super excited for that. But outside of that, this list is the bomb. It is so powerful. This is, um, look, I play a ton of bounce, but this is, I think, the best thing, the simplest thing to do in Marvel Snap and to steal a lot of cubes right now. Next up, we have the, um, this is the kind of deck that Butt and Woody and so on were playing. They were uh, traditionally running Sasquatch and Iron Man. The version that was successful basically cut Sasquatch for Cassandra Nova. Um, this is a stellar list. It is, again, doing Thena shenanigans. Thena midrange seems especially good in Deadpool's Diner. The pressure the power puts on and then Juggernaut sealing cubes is huge. Um, you can go over the top of fundamentally anything with Iron Man. Um, Ravona only has a few targets, 
but to um, go Ravona into um, Cassandra Nova and Athena on turn three is completely insane. And then to be able to go Sage and Iron Man to end the game is likewise silly. This list is very strong. Again, really cool. Um, straightforward Athena stuff. This one doesn't do the moving stuff. It just tries to drop a crazy amount of power. If you don't want variability, if you want to just be able to go I drop power, these are all within a few percentage of points of each other and are all worth playing. So this is the second version. The third best deck on the um on the Deadpool's Diner track is this nice simple Loki list. Uh sorry, Loki list, Arisham list. It is running Loki. But I think what's notable here is I don't see Leech or Dr. Octopus in this list. This one isn't built to do any silly shenanigans. It's just trying to put crazy power on the board. This is the highest win rate Arisham list. Um, all of the high win rate Arisham lists are really, really weird right now. So it's cool to see that the deck that the uh, archetype is evolving as the meta has changed. Also, Mirage, not Cable. Who'd have thought? Um, overall, this is just a really cool list, right? Like, this is built around the Nick Fury, Blob, Mockingbird, Gwenpool style interactions instead of built around screwing over opponents with non-fun stuff. So this is what Arisham looks like as of right now. Next up, we have Bounce Canova. So I took this list, I took out Darkhawk, I put in Ajax, and I've been crushing. This is the best Selene has ever felt in a deck to me. Um, Selene on Hood or Goblin are just insanely strong, and then you watch your opponent struggle. Your Viper is incredible. you still got the multiple ways to get multiple Hoods. Um, you do not have hope here, so you have to be more careful. You have to spend your uh, turn early on your Hazmat, or drop your Ajax without priority, and then when you Hazmat, you win. Either one of those works totally fine. This list is a blast. I've been absolutely crushing with it. I've been I've been alternating between this and the Derek list all day, except again with Ajax because this one is using Darkhawk literally only as um as Arisham tech, and I can use Ajax better than that because literally this list already has Hazmat. It's completely wild that this is winning so much without that. And finally, we have one more Athena list. I have no idea what this list is. I meant to play it, but I didn't have time. Uh, I've got a weird alliance problem. I know this isn't what you're here for in this section, but I'm going to say it now. So I spend a lot of time testing these decks, but the alliances want me to play very specific decks. And like, I've got to test decks for the channel, but I'm also trying to complete bounties, and those two don't super mix and match. Like, at all. So I don't know what to do and how to balance this. However, I want to play this list because this looks like... I mean, it looks like Noki, right? I love Noki. This is Noki without any of the bullshit. It should be extremely strong. And I love it. Um, Wolfsbane is a 3-7 or a 3-9 with Bast. It's easy to get uh, Havoc to a 2-8, Thena to a 2-10 by the end of the game. Uh, Angela gets huge. Red Guardian solves your problems. Just all around super cool list. You've got um, Ant-Man is a 1-7 um, if you can Bast it, while the Hood is a 2-9 um, with a Bast involved. It's It's... This is like the ultimate bass list. I need to play this list. This looks really, really cool and really, really interesting. It's like bounceless bounce or Loki less Loki. It seems like a must play. Hey, if you'd like to see any of these decks played, please check out the stream team. Today is Thursday, so the great. Today is Thursday, right? Yeah, I know how my days of the week work. Summer is a teacher, baby. The great Perry Manilow will be streaming a bunch of games, so make sure you check out Perry's stream tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern with these decks. He'll also have a video on his YouTube channel with these decks on them tomorrow morning. Game of Flash X will have a YouTube at some point this morning with yesterday's decks as well, so please do check them out. We'd really appreciate it. They're awesome human beings. All right, our final deck of the day. I wanted a Moon Knight deck, and my favorite Moon Knight deck that I had time to try, and again... Trying to test, like, in eight decks for the day while doing a bunch of bounty stuff. I played more Destroy today than I have in months. Is um, complicated. However, this is, uh, in the few games I did manage to try, it's got a really great win rate. In the few games I managed to try, this is really, really, really freaking cool and really powerful. Um, Moon Knight, now, remember, is changed. He was changed in the patch to only affect even costed cards. So that means in this deck, you're hitting Swarm. Great, you have two free 03s. 
you're hitting Midnight, a free 7. Or you're hitting Infinite, which hopefully will give you a 420. Um, well, or a 423. Either the Black Knight Shard or the Ghost Rider's um, pullback. Cool. That is how this list is intended to go. All right, you can find Combat playing this very list on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Combat Snap. We haven't featured Combat in a while, but Combat's a really great deck builder, so go check him out. Black Knight and Proxima are needed cards. Proxima is in spotlights. Do I think you show them for Proxima for this deck? No, I absolutely do not. Uh, Cassandra Nova and Copycat can be Nocturne, Regardian, Mobius, Players, Wolverine. Pick good threes or cards that want to be discarded is basically the gist here. Cassandra and Copycat are not important. Cassandra's here because Arishem still lurks, and Copycat's here because Arishem doesn't always still lurk. All right, Combat is an absolute chef for this one. Turn one, you Black Knight. Turn two, you Black Knight or Blade, um, and you're only blading Infinite at this point, if Black Knight is out. If not, you are perfectly fine to um, give yourself some swarms or give yourself a free, um, a free Proxima. Turn three, Cast or Moon Knight is generally the play. If you were able to get Black Knight out and you have Lady Sif, you are obviously fine to get rid of Infinite at that point as well. Turn three, um, turn, sorry, turn four is a turn three play, or you can start by dropping Ghost Rider Shard. I tend to prefer to go Shard before Ghost Rider if I have the choice of both. Shard is Shrunk Proof. Turn five, Black Bolt, and, or again, turn four stuff. And then turn six, a Shard or Ghost Rider and Stature. And remember, both Moon Knight and Black Bolt will get you that Stature. One last look at this very cool list. I stuck it at the end because it, this is just spice. So I hope you enjoy this spicy, spicy Marble Snap deck list from our friend Combat Snap. Questions of the day, and then we're done with you until this afternoon when we talk OTA. So Fire Troll says, in a true 50-50, do you stay in two, four, or eight cubes? True 50-50? Yep. So one of the rules that Woody's group has is um, it's not a 50-50, which means that like, hey, there's other factors involved. Um, like locations, like them moving cards that mean you are coping by staying, it's a, saying it's 50-50. But if it is a true 50-50, as Fire Troll says, yes, you should stay 100% of the time. No, it doesn't matter how many cubes that there are. Uh, th sorry, there is an exception to that in Conquest, but we'll come back to that in one minute. So on ladder, you stay. If you retreat on two, four, or eight cubes on a 50-50, you lose the initial amount 100% of the time. In a 50-50, by staying, you stay 50% of the time. Over time, um, over any time, like if this happens twice and you win one and lose one, you are now even, and if it happens three times, you're now ahead. Cool. You should absolutely stay. Now, there is an exception to this in Conquest. In Conquest, you should have an idea of whether your deck is favored or not. If your deck is heavily, uh, heavily favored, we're talking 60-40, right? 58-40, whatever. You get the idea. If your deck is heavily favored, you can run on a 50-50, assuming that the longer the game goes, the more your natural advantages will present themselves and allow you to win, because you will have a greater than 50-50 throughout the match. Get it? Cool. Fire asks if we'll ever get more stuff like the Valentine's Day or Avengers of X-Men, and uh, they were called imbalance patches, it occurs to me. Um, no, I don't think so. I think they were a lot of work. And I don't think people liked them enough. I don't think people played more. I don't think people talked about them enough such that they remained relevant. Um, so I think they gave up on them. I would greatly prefer them once every few weeks to hot locations, but there's nothing for that. It is what it is. It seems like those are dead uh, because they happened in February. They happened in March, and now we're in August, and we haven't seen them again since. So my gut feeling is that these are now gone, unfortunately. In fairness, though, I did ignore them, so it's not like I helped them live. Right? Mandatory Burnout says, one artist for an upcoming season of whatever I want. Who is it? So it's Jamie McKelvey. I absolutely love Jamie McKelvey art. And I'd probably do um, a New Mutants or New X-Men style season. I want the um, like 2000, mid-2000s uh, New X-Men, the young X-Men team, or 80s New Mutants, or just like a Young Mutant season. I would have Jamie Kelvey do it. Jamie Kelvey is the artist of the amazing uh, Young Avengers run that I love so much, along with um, Kieran Gillen. And I want to see him do more awesome, young, like, vibrant art. 
Models wants to know what love feels like physically to me. It's apparently a question that my friend Models likes a lot. Um, I can feel love right around here. I don't know why. There's a warmth to it and a caring to it and a worry to it. There's like always a concern, uh, like a wish for well-being while with a understanding and that there's a lack of control for that. That causes like worry bordering on fear when it's focused on that feeling um, sinks lower into my stomach, but mostly love feels around here and I can feel it sort of as a warmth in the back of my head. That is my physical uh, feeling for love. If you'd like your questions read out in tomorrow's video, please leave some in the comments to this video and, or hop on the Discord and we have a questions for me section. Thank you. Certain tiers of support on our Patreon come with on-air thanks. And I'm just going to quickly run you through what the Patreon is. So you can join for completely free. And if you're on the free tier, just it's great. You'll get like notifications of what we do. And if there's something we do that you want to buy into, you can. We run um, one giant league tournament. It's called the Snap Judgments League. That one has like um, over 200 to 300 people and like a ton of major content creators in it. And it's awesome. We also run weekly smaller tournaments, King of the Hill, quick single elimination hitters, and then other stuff as well. Uh, Gunny's always coming up with new tournament ideas. This is on the $1 tier. The other thing on the $1 tier is um, there's a, I'm creating a database of all of my um, decks, all the decks from the videos. So if you ever want to just like look through all the different decks, that's on the $1 tier. So for just $1, remember you get seven days a week of videos, which means 30 ish um, videos a month, plus shorts, uh, plus extra OTA and patch videos. So more like 35 videos a month for a dollar. Um, seems like even then it's just a pretty good deal. The $5 tier comes with like a whole bunch of stuff that most people don't really take advantage of, like deck doctors and so on. But what people really seem to like the $5 tier for is I post the videos um, usually the night before, as soon as they're done recording. And as soon as I have them ready on YouTube, I post them there and a whole bunch of people watch them early. Um, generally speaking, between 20 and 40 people do that. The $10 tier comes with other extra stuff. Um, notably, I do extra giveaways there. And in addition on the $10 tier, uh, I do exclusive videos. So if you want videos that like look at my untapped stats, look at un break down untapped stats and like look through and talk about and think things through and the top 10 decks from each video weekly, that's on the $10 tier. So if you're interested, I'd really appreciate the extra support. And hey, if that's not for you, no stress. All right, I'd like to say thank you to Abigail Gieslin, Mandatory Burnout. Cables, Matt H, It Regardless, David G. Wingfield, LAB, Bob Thorne Newman, Good Dog Gamer, This Is The Way, Inc., I Am Frostman, Jane Everett, Corwin, Brian Dryan, Care Tixley, Poire, Pi Rofros, The Goat Seeker, who's running one of our alliances. So is, uh, so are a bunch of these people, I guess. Den Man Falcon, check him out on YouTube. Good Pro Joe. Docty, the king of new Mar Marvel Snap card content. Bat Nick, also running one. Ginger Prime, Philip Rakovich, running one and helping us out with the shorts. Haplo, Kenny Loggins of the Danger Zone. Rob Silverman, The Biza, X Force Fiends KPG. Winner of Snap Judgment League Season 1, Tommy Nyquist. The king of Rosebra, Black Dahlia in my, my uh, alliance. The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, Ryan Wood, Kev Sihoda, Lunacris. Archangel 3K, John Q, 8th Sage, Mod Supreme, who put together all this Alliance stuff, has done so much work, so appreciated, models, Darth Tater, sorry about getting banned, but, Rema Satala, Brian Kaufman, Tristan H. Martin, uh, Tristan, I hope you got in, if you didn't, shoot me a message, please, Jason B, J.D. McDonald Dean Ho, The Fuzzy Dunlop, Spectrumix, Matt H, there's two Matt H's, DJ Mackie Hijinks, No Frickin' Flex, Ah Q Laris, Greg Sterry, Seamus, Jonesy, Two Ties, running in the lines, running my lines, technically, uh, The Great Lauren Whatevs, The Pirate King Tucker, The Homie Man, and of course, Gunny T, where the T stands for, 
Don't forget, there's a second video coming today. But if you'd also like to hear more about the data mines, please check below. Uh, I did a full video breaking down the data mines, which are the full October season, which is symbiotes. And hey, get excited. Bounce and discard are getting new cards. Peace.